Oh. Big news, big news on the legal front. If you, like I, have been frustrated by the fact that Congress and the White House have not repealed Obamacare, the fascistic medical law, well, this might be for you. The New American's Michael Tennant just reported that on Monday, 20 states attorneys general headed by the Texas AG and Wisconsin AG have brought suit to bring down the rest of Obamacare. It's a very interesting argument, and I'll give it to you sort of in two prongs. First, we have to go back to 2017. In late 2017, the White House and the Republicans in Congress passed a so-called tax reform bill that, as part of it, removed the mandate to have to buy health insurance that individuals had to do. I told people specifically, be quiet with the fake news media because I don't want them talking too much about it because I didn't know how people would. But now that it's approved, I can say the individual mandate on health care where you had to pay not to have insurance. Okay, think of that one. You pay not to have insurance. The individual mandate has been repealed. Now, why is this key? Well, for that, we go back to the second prong of it. And that goes back to 2009 and 2010, when they were arguing in Congress and the White House that they had to pass Obamacare. Of course, you couldn't see it. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Part of it was a mandate that you had to buy health insurance. The Obama administration said, oh, by the way, this is just a tax. This isn't a fine or anything like that. For us to say that you've got to take a responsibility to get health insurance is absolutely not a tax increase. Now, they used that term so that people would more readily accept it. But when later in 2012, a Supreme Court case was brought against Obamacare called NFIB v. Sebelius, the Supreme Court realized that they could actually not hear the case if it was termed a tax. Why? Because in 1867, there was something called the Anti-Injunction Act that was passed. And that stipulates that no one can bring suit about a tax unless they have actually paid it. And at that time, the tax had not been paid. It wasn't instituted until 2014. So, in order to hear the case, the Supreme Court said, oh no, it's not a tax, it's a fine. Then, when they found that everything was hunky-dory in some ridiculous Supreme Court fashion, that the Obamacare mandates were perfectly fine on both insurance companies and individuals, they said, oh, by the way, by the way, we were wrong. It's actually not a fine, it's a tax. Today's decision was a victory for people all over this country. Get it? So they went completely circular. Now, why is that key? The reason is because in the argument that was laid down in district court on Monday, the attorneys general noted that part of Obamacare says that the mandate, the, ins the insurance mandate, the tax that the IRS can take from you if you don't pay is an inseparable part of the whole package of Obamacare. And they're saying that since this was repealed, all of Obamacare must be null and void. This is huge. Now, we don't know if this goes to the Supreme Court what they will actually rule, and I'm a little bit frustrated because one major aspect of this, which is the mandates for guaranteed issue that have been applied to insurance companies, those aren't being addressed. But this is a very, very big deal, and I hope people will watch it. After that, perhaps they can address the ridiculous idea that insurance companies have to cover people with pre-existing conditions, because all that does is inspire young people to drop their policies, making rates go way up, and of course, getting people very angry at the insurance companies. But that's a separate issue from this lawsuit. We're going to watch this very closely, and um, some of us might actually have our fingers crossed about this. For MRC-TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.